Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu narrates a hadith. May Allah be pleased with him. And this hadith is narrated in Ahmad, the collection Ahmad, that the human being, when he leaves his home and goes to the masjid, and he sets forth towards the masjid, right, left, right, left, the legs, right, left, right, left. You know like the machine that moves the parts of the machine. So the body, the legs, the feet move. Then his feet, the strides he's taking are not the same. You know what he was doing from the morning? Using his feet, going out, in, going to the shop, buying meat, buying vegetables, buying fruit, going to work. From morning till evening, these feet and legs are used for this. Going here, going there, meeting this person, run that way, this way. Yeah? But when he departs home to go to the masjid, then the value and the utilization of the legs is different. The same legs, the same feet. It's the same feet, the same shoes, the same strides. But now the whole effect changes, the scenario changes. When he sets forth towards the masjid, Allah's home, and the legs are working to get to the house of Allah, then the position and the status of the legs is different. Those strides don't remain so. Rather, straight away two angels come to that person from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two angels. And then a chart is made for the strides he's taking. Alhamdulillah. So the angels, they take his strides into their protection and ownership. And the value of his strides are so massive and great that those same strides that no one was asking us from morning, no one cared. So valuable come your strides, your footsteps, that from the heavens, that on every foot, they make a chart and account and they open the file. And one foot, you go towards the masjid, one angel writes the deed, then the next footstep you take and then it forgives the sin. It strikes out the sin. Same foot, same legs. You went to buy the meat, you went to the meat shop, to the vegetable shop, to the grocery shop. Difference that when your feet and strides are now embarking on their objective, on their objective, look at the difference. Same legs, same feet. But when you start going to the house of Allah, then the value of your footsteps is different. Their condition is different. And the nurani, the light in your footsteps is different. Their status is different. Their rank is different. The angels are looking at your legs, your feet, your movement. They are heavenly angels. They're making a report. Allah, this many strides, this many footsteps. If the masjid is one mile away, then you do the analysis and the count and investigation that what will be the value of all the strides you took to the masjid. Then when you assigned yourself to Allah, what did Allah say in response? As Abu Mama radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. In Tabarani, he narrates a hadith that when a person, he does something where he allocates a bit of time, to his Lord, and he sets forth and gives a few footsteps to his Lord, to his Lord, and he gives a bit of time to his Lord and sits in the majlis. Majlis, what is the reward? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated that when that individual goes and joins the majlis, he gets the whole reward of one complete Hajj, one complete Hajj. Allah Taala's remembrance. Al Hazrat Abu Sa'id radiyallahu anhu narrates a hadith in Sahih Tirmidhi, a Sahih hadith. The Sahaba Karam was sitting gathered together. The noble companions, radiyallahu anhu, and one companion requested to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a unique question. Unique question. Look at his taste, his enjoyment. He suddenly asked a question for the benefit of the Ummah. He said, "O oh, Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that from all of mankind, who is the greatest? From all of mankind, who is the highest? And on the day of judgment, who will be closest?" On the day of judgment, who will be closest and best in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The closest to Allah and the best in the eyes of Allah. What a great question. Eh? What a valuable question from this sahabi. Afdal, who is the greatest person in the eyes of Allah. And on the day of judgment of Prophet Allah subhanahu wa who will be the best in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at his sahabi. Wah, oh, my companion, what a question. What a question. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't give long speeches. He used to summarize concise answers. Brief answers encapsulating the whole deen. His answer would encapsulate the whole deen. Now look at this question. This question was for us today. Definitely. Huh? Over a millennium ago, the question was asked, that who's closest to Allah on the day of judgment? Who will be the best in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this is what we need, isn't it? This is what all of us need. This question is relevant to us. So the answer that Rasulullah Sallam gave, should we practice that or not? I ask you. Should we practice it or not? I ask you. It's such a big question. And the answer that comes, the answer that comes, we need to delve and ponder of this answer. Because the answer that's given by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will have the greatest value. 
the greatest price tag. So if the person practices that, he will be the greatest insan in this world and closest to Allah on the Day of Judgment. Both titles. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied to his companion. What did he reply? What did he reply? Allahu Akbar. The person who does dhikr of Allah in abundance, the man and the woman who do dhikr kathir in abundance. The person who does the dhikr of Allah kathir, man or woman, in abundance, in high quantity.